Hello everybody, my name is Piotr Klimai, I'm a Juniper Networks Certified Instructor and also a Juniper Ambassador and today I'm going to tell you about configuring route-based site-to-site IPsec VPN on the Juniper SRX series. We will consider the following topology with two SRX devices, SRX A and SRX B. Uh, both devices ha have an interface G003 connected to the Internet. Uh, the addressing on SRX A is 1.1.1.1 and on SRX B is 2.2.2.2. Also, each SRX has a protected network behind it, network A or network B, with addressing 10.1.1/24 uh, and 10.2.2/24, respectively. Currently, SRX A and SRX B provide Internet access to networks A and B, but networks A and B uh, cannot at this time uh, communicate uh, with each other. And what we want to do is we want to create a, a secure tunnel through the Internet between SRX A and SRX B and to make uh, networks A and B uh, communicate through this uh, tunnel. At this time we, we can check that host A, for example, cannot ping uh, host B uh, because there is no tunnel uh, yet, uh, no communication between those networks is possible. So from host A I can send the ping to 10.2.2.2 and uh, you see it gets a destination unreachable error. What we will do now is we will create a secure tunnel between SRX A and SRX B. And we will uh, go with route-based IPsec VPN approach, uh, which allows for separation of VPN configuration and security policy configuration. Uh, we will need to configure Internet Key Exchange uh, protocol to set up a dynamic tunnel uh, between SRX devices and uh, IKE works in two phases. Phase 1, which is a secure channel for communication between devices, which is configured uh, in Edit Security IKE stanza of configuration. And Phase 2 is a particular VPN tunnel for user traffic configured in Edit Security IPsec uh, stanza of configuration. Uh, we can uh, present uh, this as follows. Uh, two SRX devices uh, set up a phase 1 channel between each other and then uh, using keys of phase 1 they set up a phase 2 channel and user's traffic is encrypted and authenticated using keys of phase 2 uh, so we can uh, say that it uh, so to say it goes inside phase 2 uh, and how exactly we configure route based IPsec VPN. We first configure phase 1 and phase 2 of IPsec VPN and uh, we also configure a tunnel interface which is st0.x interface and here x is a unit number uh, which can be any number such as 0, 1, 2, etc. and we bind the IPsec VPN to the tunnel interface. Then any traffic that is routed to the tunnel interface through static or dynamic routing uh, goes to this IPsec VPN, if, of course, security policy permits it. Uh, here a configuration on site A is shown. We uh, configure uh, a tunnel interface, which is ST0.1 in our case. We put it into VPN zone. This is not required to create a separate uh, zone for tunnel interfaces, but uh, it is convenient, so we do it. We put the tunnel interface into separate VPN zone. And uh, because uh, traffic uh, sh should go from trust zone to VPN, uh, from the perspective of SRX device, uh, the security policy must be configured between trust zone and VPN zone. 
the actual IPsec packets go out of G003 interface in the untrust zone, uh, but uh, note that no policy is needed between VPN and untrust zones in this case. However, host inbound traffic must be enabled on the untrust zone for Internet Key Exchange uh, protocol. Configuring iKey phase 1 uh, will requ require several steps. Uh, first step is configuring iKey proposal, uh, which is basically a, a set of algorithms and some other parameters of the tunnel. Here we choose uh, authentication and encryption algorithms, uh, Diffie-Hellman group and lifetime, also authentication method for this tunnel. Then we configure IKE policy which references the proposals which we configured before. We choose the mode of IKE which can be main or aggressive, which is main in our case, and we enter the pre-shared key for this tunnel. Uh, the last step is we configure IKE gateway which references the IKE policy and we configure uh, the external interface under IKE gateway. This is the interface in the untrust zone. Also, address for IKE gateway is the address of the remote SRX device. We also here configure uh, host and bound traffic system services IKE on the untrust zone. This is the configuration on site A and on site B. Uh, the configuration is the same except the IK gateway address, which should be 1.1.1.1 on SRX B. So I will enter those commands on both SRX devices and to keep it short, I have those commands in my notepad here. So I will just paste those commands to SRX A. and to SRX B, but I just need to change the Ike gateway address. Then I need to configure phase 2 on both devices. This is done under security IPsec stanza of configuration. We configure IPsec proposals, which is again uh, a set of parameters such as authentication algorithm, encryption algorithm, uh, protocol and lifetime. We configure IPsec policy, which references uh, IPsec proposals and optionally we can configure perfect forward secrecy. And we configure IPsec VPN, which references the Ike gateway configured on the previous slide and IPsec policy. Also, I turn on VPN monitor. This feature will uh, make SRX device uh, ping other end of the tunnel to check if uh, the tunnel is still alive. Also, option establish tunnels immediately uh, makes SRX device to basically to establish the tunnel right after it has been configured, not waiting for uh, user traffic. And we bind the interface. Uh, so we bind IPsec VPN to the tunnel interface, ST0.1 in our case. Those commands are the same on both devices and I put those commands on SRX A and SRX B. Now we need to configure tunnel interface and routing. On both devices we configure ST0 interface uh, with unit 1 and put fam family INET on it and we put this interface ST0.1 in VPN zone. And then we configure static route. Uh, on SRX A we tell the device that network B which is 10.2.2 .2 .2 .2 is behind uh, this tunnel interface and on SRX B we configure route to network A uh, through this tunnel interface. So these are commands for SRX A and similar commands on SRX B with the route to network A.
and the last thing is configuring the security policies. So we need to configure policies between trust zone and VPN zone to allow traffic. And uh, for simplicity, we configure we allow all hosts in network A to communicate with all hosts in network B in both directions. Uh, we need to configure address book, uh, and for simplicity, I use global address book here on both devices. I have entries for network A and network B and I uh, put this in configuration on both devices and then I have policies from trust to VPN and from VPN to trust uh, for device A and for device B and of course I need to do a commit on both devices. So now I expect that uh, IPsec VPN will go up and I will be able to check it with the following commands. So security IK security associations shows us the status of phase one. Show security IPsec security associations shows us the status of phase two. And I will also expect that uh, device A will now be able to ping, that is host A will now be able to ping host B. Uh, so let's check the status of the tunnel on SRX A for example. Show security IK, security associations. You see that phase 1 is up. Show security IPsec, security associations. We show, we see that phase 2 is up. And on host A we can send the ping which wasn't working initially but at this time we see that ping goes fine. On any SRX device we can uh, watch statistics show security IPsec statistics that shows that actually we have some encrypted and decrypted packets and this number is actually incre increasing with time which means that uh, the traffic is actually encrypted and decrypted. Another useful comment is show route which which is supposed to show us uh, that traffic is actually directed to the tunnel interface and here we see that on SRX A the traffic that goes to network B to, to network 10.2.2 slash 24 is actually routed to the tunnel interface. So you see that now everything is fine, uh, traffic is able to go from network A to network B. So that's all, uh, thanks for listening and I hope this learning byte uh, will help you in your future work. Good luck! Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.